Okay, I guess you can start a little. Good. So we start. Uh, first, thank you uh, all for uh, joining us uh, for our talk, and especially thank you, Paulina, for encouraging us to present our work. <laughs> uh, we are very happy to uh, yeah, discuss with you uh, these data sets. So let's start. Uh, we will be talking about polyphonic singing data sets for MIR research. This is like a very broad uh, title, but uh, we will go into specifics uh, in a minute. I will we will start introducing ourselves. Uh, I'm Elena Cuesta. Um, I started my PhD back in 2017 at the MTG in Barcelona uh, with Emilia Gomez as a supervisor. And my main research interests are basically things related to pitch modeling. I'm focusing on um, polyphonic vocal music. So I do some multi-pitch estimation in vocal music. I've also done some work on intonation analysis in the past, uh, modeling unisons and these kind of things. And I use a mixture of uh, machine learning and signal processing techniques for everything, basically. That's, that's the main thing. So my name is Sebastian Rosenzweig. I'm a PhD student at the International Audio Laboratories Erlangen in the group of Meinert Müller. I'm about to finish my third year of PhD right now, and my research interests are actually quite similar to the ones of Elena. So also analysis of polyphonic vocal music with, yeah, with emphasis on intonation and performance aspects. Um, I'm interested in close-up microphones, in fundamental frequency estimation, and also recently timescale modification. I'm rather on the signal processing side, not doing much machine learning at the moment, but possibly also in the next months. Yeah, polyphonic singing, that's what it's all about. We define polyphonic singing as multiple people singing together a cappella. Um, and as you can see, there's a whole variety of um, is polyphonic singing. So starting off with different generations, there's old people singing, there's young people singing, there's Georgian singing and African singing, uh, different cultural backgrounds, different repertoires. So polyphonic singing, to sum it up, is plays a vital role in many musical cultures all around uh, the world and is a very interesting subject to study. However, uh, many facets are yet to be explored and understood, such as how do choirs tune actually, or how do singers interact in a vocal ensemble? How do they adjust their pitches? And also what are the cultural differences? And most importantly, how can we measure such things using MIR techniques? That's important for us as MIR researchers. And for this, we need suitable data sets. And this is actually quite crucial, as we will see in the following, and Elena will give us an overview on existing data sets. Yeah, so we wanted to start the, the presentation giving an overview of uh, some data sets of polyphonic uh, vocal music that we know of, or that, that we've used in the past at least. Uh, so the first one uh, was released in 2016. It's a, it's a small data set of choir recordings. Uh, specifically, there it contains five short excerpts of choir music. Western choral music. Um, it's not a multi-track data set, which means that basically we have commercial recordings of a choir, like with a, with a single microphone, and it has media notations. Uh, so this data set, although it's small, it can be used, for instance, for the evaluation of multi-pitch estimation systems. Um, and it's not publicly available, but you can get it on request. Then we have the barbershop quartets and the Bach chorals data sets. Both of them are multi-track data sets. Uh, they are recordings of four singers. Um, they contain MIDI, contain MIDI notations and F0 notations automatically extracted for each of the voices of the quartet. Um, they have 20, 22 and 26 songs each, uh, and they are quite large, at least in comparison to, to the previous one that I just mentioned. But they are not publicly available because they come from a commercial application. So um, they are not out there for researchers to use in general. So uh, yeah. Then we have a, a big data set that was uh, described in a paper by, by Frank Sher Sherbaum last year. It's a collection of uh, Georgian vocal music, a multi-track data set uh, with uh, different tracks per, per singer. It has no annotation and it's uh, no annotation, sorry, and it's also available uh, on request. 
And then we also wanted to mention the choral singing data set that we released a couple of years ago already. It's a small data set of a choir. We recorded uh, three songs with a choir of 16 singers. We had four singers per section. And together with the audio recordings of each singer, because it's a multi-track data set, uh, we also provided the MIDI files, uh, synchronized MIDI files, F0 annotations and note annotations for each of the sections. And this is available in, in Zenodo, but as I was saying, it's only three songs, so it's a quite small data set. And then we wanted to we want to talk today about two new data sets that were released this year, the Air Comage Mini data set uh, and the DAX tool choir set, which will be the focus of this presentation. The Ergomage Billy data set um, was released at the beginning of the, of the year. It's not a multi-track data set, but it's um, a data set of uh, Georgian vocal music. It has quite a lot of annotations. It is publicly available, and Sebastian will talk about this in a couple of minutes. And then we will go to the DAX tool choir set, which is a multi-track data set that uh, we recorded um, during a DAX tool seminar uh, last year. And it has also quite a lot of annotations. It's also publicly available, and we also released it as a TSMIR data set paper. Okay, thank you. Let's start with the Echo Maishvili dataset. So this was published um, in spring this year, and it's a collaboration with Frank Scherbaum, who is a professor of seismology at the University of Potsdam, and has also a big or like an interesting hobby that's uh, Georgian vocal music. He's been there several times, recorded singers, and also sings himself. And another co collaborator that's David Shubiashvili, who is a Georgian ethnomusicologist. The Akumashvili dataset is based on a collection of traditional three voice Georgian songs. Uh, one has to note here that Georgia has a rich and long history of polyphonic singing which also belongs to the intangible uh, world cultural heritage of the UNESCO. And in this case, these three voice songs are performed by the former Georgian master chanter Atem Erkomaishvili. The songs were recorded uh, using tape recorders back in, in 1966. And if you compare the numbers, it's one year before the death of Atem Erkomaishvili. And although the recording quality is quite bad for modern standards, um, these recordings are a valuable uh, source of uh, Georgian musical thinking. Um, they're considered as masterpieces. And since Atim Eko Maishvili was one of the last representatives of his kind, he had to sing all the three voices by himself. And this was made possible by a special recording procedure, which is visualized here. So at the beginning of each recording, Atim Akomaishvili announced the name of the song and then sung the top voice. And then the top voice was played back and a middle voice recorded uh, was recorded with a second tape recorder. And this procedure was repeated um, with the bass voice. So the top and middle voice being played back and the bass voice sung on top. And I will give you a short example on what this sounds like. <laughs> quality decreases with each iteration. And this was especially challenging for us when we started annotating um, this data set. On this slide, you see all the annotations uh, we did for this data set. So starting from the top, we first annotated um, the beginning and end times of the recording segments. 
And then we annotated the SEO trajectories for all three voices that's de depicted in part A. And the activations of the SEO trajectories are uh, plotted in part B. And then we also annotated onsets for the first voice um, in the recordings that's depicted in part C. And these onsets actually correspond to digital sheet music, which we also publish along with the data set. This, this digital sheet music is actually based on uh, transcriptions of David Shukliashvili, um, who's been dealing with the recordings uh, quite a long time ago and transcribed them, but they were not in digital format. Now we included XML uh, files in, in our data set. And we actually also computed the onsets of the second and the third segment, um, so the, the voices in the second and the third segment. Um, we did this using an automated procedure by making use of the segment structure, basically the overdubbing process, which is uh, repeating. So this is an approximation, so this is not exact, but this is a rough, this worked out in most of the cases. As one important part, we also developed a web-based interface for accessing uh, the data set. So since this is inter uh, interdisciplinary research and there might also be people uh, that are not able to run Python scripts or Jupyter notebooks, we have created um, a website where you can see all the songs and have a uh, score following web player with the different voices. And I will quickly show this to you. So this allows anyone to quickly have a look at the recordings and follow our, uh, our transcriptions. To give you a quick idea of what we did already with the data, um, we did a first study on harmonic intervals in the data set. And we did this by superimposing the FCO trajectories of the three voices and computing the pairwise intervals um, for all of the songs. And um, the result you see on the bottom, so this is a histogram of harmonic intervals. And we already see that uh, there is a very prominent peak at 700 cents, with the, which is the fifth, and also a prominent peak at 1,200 cents, which is the octave, and uh, one at zero cents, which is the unison. But one thing that is quite interesting is uh, the peak at 350 cents, which is uh, between the minor and the major third, which is sort of, yeah, we consider as characteristic for uh, traditional Georgian vocal music. Um, since it doesn't really sound major nor minor and something in between, so this is peak is the reason. Future work is concerned with the uh, recordings that were recently made by Frank Scherbom and his uh, colleagues in Georgia. These are field recordings and they used several close-up microphones to record different singers in different villages. And yeah, now we can analyze and compare these recordings um, which have been made almost 50 years after uh, the recordings were, of Atem Erko Maishwili were made. This concludes our Georgian part of the presentation. Now let's go over to the Dachstuhl choir set. This has also been published by now, uh, I guess it was in summer in July. And this has been a collaboration with Elena Cuesta and Emilia Gomez from UPF Barcelona. And everything started actually almost two, a bit more than two years ago uh, at an MAR seminar 
Edgeloss Darkstuhl on computational methods for melody and voice processing in music recordings. So the idea of a Darkstuhl seminar is actually to take 30 researchers and lock them in uh, for a week, let them have ideas and exchange. And uh, yeah, in, in this way also uh, support new research activities. And one activity was sing together. Uh, we found some singing enthusiasts and you see them all in the picture and you might already know some familiar faith or see some familiar faces here. And we rehearsed uh, a couple of pieces uh, together. And then at the end of the week, we also recorded several performances. And one of them uh, I will quickly play back. Oh. As you can hear, uh, these are MIR researchers and not professional uh, singers or choirs, except Polina, <laughs> you have to note here. Uh, um, but most of the singers were clearly doing this as a hobby um, and for yeah, creating a nice data set. And Alena will give more details on the recordings right now. Good, so I will go through the so some of the details of the, of the data set, um, we rehearsed and recorded afterwards two different songs, uh, Locus Iste and TV Poem. The one we just heard was an excerpt of Locus Iste. And then we also recorded some systematic exercises, as we call them, which basically include some scales, uh, some intonation exercises, and also some uh, cadences. Um, so the data set includes these three uh, different uh, pieces of music, let's say. For each of them, we recorded multiple takes. Uh, so for the songs, for instance, we have at least two takes per song and a maximum of seven takes for, for the song that we have more uh, takes. And then since we, we had a choir of uh, 13 singers, we had two sopranos, two altos, four tenors and five basses. Uh, as you see, it's, this, is not a, this was not a really balanced uh, choir in terms of uh, number of singers per part. But uh, since we, we created the choir uh, from like, just the participants of the seminar, uh, it worked out really well. So uh, from these 13 singers, we organized them uh, in three different settings, in three different configurations. The first one is the full choir, where the 13 singers uh, performed at the same time. And then uh, we selected uh, four singers and then four, four different singers, so in a total of eight singers, and we organized them in two different quartets, uh, SATV, SATV quartets. So we have the full choir, quartet A and quartet B, as we call them. So all the performances were recorded with a stereo microphone. Uh, which was placed between two and three meters from the singers. And then as a, an, an important and for us like very relevant feature of the data set, each of the singers had different close-up uh, microphones. Uh, so as you can see in the figure on the right of the slide, uh, we used headset microphones, dynamic microphones and throat microphones. And for you to get an idea of how different or similar depends uh, they sound, we will first listen uh, an excerpt of the dynamic microphone. Yeah. Locus iste adeo factus est. Now we listen to a headset microphone, you will hear that they are quite similar. Locus iste adeo factus est. And now we listen to the throat microphone. So as you can see that the main difference between the dynamic microphone and headset uh, with respect to the throat microphone is that uh, we usually used to hear uh, recordings of from dynamic microphones or headset microphones. But the good thing of the, uh, about the throat microphone is that it captures the signal at the, the throat of the singer. So uh, for, in, 
from in one side, there's uh, the vocal track contribution to the signal is missing. So there are some things that cannot be done with this kind of thing of signals. But on the other hand, you can use these uh, signals for um, pitch estimations, for instance, pitch estimation, for instance, because the, the fundamental frequency is still there and there are not a lot of harmonics that can mess things up. So these are the, the microphones that we used. So together uh, with the audio recordings, uh, the data set also contains some annotations. The first annotations that we have are bit annotations that we annotated manually. Uh, then we also provide automatically extracted F0 trajectories. We used CREP and PIN for this. We provide, provide two versions of the, of the F0 annotations. And then uh, we also generated some uh, score representations uh, from, from, the, from the MIDI files, from the scores that we had. And we synchronized the score to the, to the audio recordings using the bit annotations that we had. And instead of uh, providing the MIDI files directly, we, we converted them into CSV files that contain for each of the nodes, the node onset, the node offset, and the pitch of each of the nodes. And then um, since we were uh, creating uh, automatically uh, extracted F0 notations, we wanted to validate uh, these, these uh, trajectories, the fundamental frequency trajectories. So what we did is we selected two quartet recordings and we annotated the F0 manually for these two recordings. And then we used a standard evaluation metrics for melody extraction to compare the automatic annotations to the manual annotations. Uh, this is everything for the, for the annotations. And so following a similar uh, approach than the, the one Sebastian explained uh, for the Erko Maisvili data set, we created a web interface um, to browse the data set basically to listen to the to the audio files and to the and have a visualization, a visualization of the score that we can show you now. I think. Yeah. select a piece and then browse and click each of the microphones and hear the differences. And then uh, besides the web interface, we also created a small Python toolbox that contains some functions to parse annotations and also a couple of notebooks that demonstrate some uh, applications that can be done with, uh, with the data set. Then uh, in the Dismir paper that uh, we released with, with the data set, we, we have two case studies. Uh, I will talk about one of them now, uh, which is about uh, multiple F0 estimation in vocal music. So in the paper, um, we use the deep salience multivision estimation model as a um, as a baseline to estimate the frequencies of each of the singers of, of quartets. So we compared uh, three scenarios of the same performance. We chose a locus iste take uh, of, the, of the data set. And we created an artificial mixture of uh, the four dynamic microphones of each of the singers of the quartet. Then we also uh, used the stereo recording of the same performance. And then as a third scenario, uh, we chose the stereo recording plus some additional reverb to make uh, hope potentially the, the, the situation more challenging for the, for the algorithm. And quickly what we found is that um, if we look at the F score, for instance, what we see is that the most challenging or in the lowest performance is um, of the, the, this model is with the stereo recording with uh, reverb because voices are mixed together and it's more difficult, but this is also closer to a real world uh, recording of a choir. Then the middle, uh, let's say performance is the one with the stereo recording without additional reverb. And the best performance we obtain is with the artificial mixture of dynamic microphones. And we really think that this is because since these signals are clean individually for each of the singers. Uh, when you mix them, the, singer, the, the singers are more balanced and it's easier for the algorithm to uh, select or to find the different voices. This is what we, what, we are, uh, um, what we have in the paper, but for the presentation, we wanted to um, have a, um, like a different experiment that we did recently. We chose the TV poem song from the from the data set and we took advantage of the multi-pitch estimation model that I was presenting at ISMIR this year. 
which was specifically designed and trained for polyphonic vocal music because the deep salience model is a multi-purpose model for multi-pitch estimation and is not really trained for polyphonic vocal music. So we wanted to see what happened with a model specifically designed for this. And what we did is uh, we take two main quartet scenarios. Again, we, choose, uh, we, we create a mixture of four dynamic microphones from the full choir setting. So instead of uh, taking the full choir, we select four singers from the full choir and create the artificial mixture. And then we also choose an st a stereo recording of the, of the mixture of a quartet for the TV poem song. And we run the multi estimation algorithm on, this, on these scenarios for all the takes that we have. So this plot shows like a lot of information, but the, the interesting thing that we see, if for instance, we look at the F-score that um, is, yeah, it, it works more like as a general metric. Um, what we see is that we obtain a better performance of the algorithm for the mixture of dynamic microphones, which are the four lines on the top of the plot, the green, the brown, red, and purple uh, points. And we have a lower performance for the, for the micro for the reverb uh, recording for the sorry for the stereo recording that uh, we use from the quartet. So this is basically what we were expecting. Um, that uh, just as it happened with the deep salience model, when we have an artificial mixture of dynamic microphones, we get uh, better performances than if we than if we use the stereo uh, recording of the same performance. Um, then in the next slide we show uh, some a plot of uh, the outputs that we get. So this is the, the green uh, dots represent the prediction and the black thing uh, behind is the ground truth in terms of pitch. And this is an output from the mixture of the dynamic microphones. And we see that basically the algorithm does a pretty good job. But if we go to the next slide, we see what happens if the input is a stereo microphone recording. We see more or less that the algorithm does a good job with the soprano, tenor, and bass voices. But uh, we see that the alto part is quite uh, bad, let's say. So it's missing a lot of points. And this makes the, the recall decrease a lot. Um, so our hypothesis, uh, this is a preliminary ex experiment with this song. But the hypothesis is that uh, maybe the alto was not singing the, as loud as the other singers. So basically, the algorithm is missing uh, the, the alto contribution in this case. This doesn't happen with the, the dynamic microphones mixture because the singers are more balanced in terms of volume also. So yeah, this is what we did for the, for the multi pitch estimation case study. And now I pass the word to Sebastian again. He will uh, summarize everything. OK, thank you, Elena. Uh, let's sum things up. So we presented two data sets. One was the Echo Maishvili data set, which is on traditional Georgian vocal music. Um, it is based on old tape recordings, and the emphasis of this data stack is rather on musicological aspects. So, for example, Georgian tuning. The second data set was uh, the Dachstu choir set. It features amateur choir, choral music, and multi track recordings. And for us, um, this data set um, is rather designed to study technical aspects such as microphones and make use of the individual tracks, such as for multi-pitch estimation. What they have in common is that both data sets are a very nice scenario for MAR research on polyphonic singing. Um, two data sets that are publicly available that you can use for um, singing with research and also for evaluating MAR tasks such as multiple F0 estimation. That's it. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and we'll be happy to answer questions right now. Thank you very much, Sebastian and Helena. Maybe a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Well done. So uh, from my side, I just want to say a huge thank you for doing this uh, whole work, uh, because this is what uh, is uh, to an extent undervalued in the academic uh, um, world today. Uh, but this is what uh, 
uh, is the substance uh, for uh, for all the work that comes after it. So uh, huge thank you for that. And I would like to open up if anyone has immediate questions. Please. I've got a ahead. question about about um, bleed. Uh, so when you played the individual tracks and you could hear the rest of the choir in the background, is that the level of bleed you've got in the recordings? You mean the for the for the Dark Soul choir set, no? Yeah, in the Dark Soul. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these are these are the raw signals. So this is what we get uh, for the for the signals. Yeah. And has anyone thought about trying to suppress the bleed or do anything like that? We haven't tried, um, but this is I think this is something that could be done easily. We at least uh, we've done some experiments with an, a similar data set uh, that had a similar uh, level of bleeding. And using a source separation method for vocals, this is quite, this is improved quite a lot. So this is something that could be done. We haven't done it. We haven't tried yet, but uh, this is uh, indeed something that would be very useful, Dep especially depending on the application you want to use the data for. Did you find in the pitch extraction that it ever got the, any of the pitches from the background singers? So there, there was the case where we uh, um, extracted um, pitches from a dynamic mic and from a throat mic. And we could actually see that the pitch extractor sometimes jumps to a neighboring voice, uh, especially for, let's say, tenor signals, for example. So the tenor was standing next to the bass signal and uh, uh, to the, the tenor was standing next to the bass and the bass was quite loudly singing and then the pitch tracker jumped to the bass voice for the dynamic microphone. Yeah. For the throat microphone, we have a better separation. You still, if you, uh, you still hear a bit of bleeding, but this is obviously not sufficient for the algorithm to get distracted. So I guess we, we can avoid some of the estimation errors with just using throat microphone signals in comparison to dynamic microphones. But you didn't have throat mics on everyone, so. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, for the quartets. We had throat, throat microphones for everyone, but not for the full choir. So uh, adding something to this, um, this happens. Uh, so in the Locus Iste song, there's this part where the tenor starts singing alone. There's in the middle of the song. So in this particular part, there was some like in this. Uh, well, while all the other voices were supposed to not be singing, there was some confusion for the algorithms. But in general in like this uh, scenario where everyone's singing, they did quite well, so yeah. I was wondering, did you see the same effect uh, for the alto voice uh, in uh, what you showed where, where the algorithm has difficulty with the alto voice? Was that for quartets or for the whole choir? That was for a quartet in, in this particular example, yeah. Okay, so you, you're assuming that the the singer was just uh, softer than the rest, yeah? I think so. Okay. I think so. If you listen to, I actually, I think in the slide, there's the original audio. We, um, I didn't play it because of time, but if you want to listen to it, we, I think we can. I'm just wondering, because you had two recordings from two quartets, there's at least something to compare. Was it the case for both of, both of them? uh i didn't check in this experiment i oh, know i did yeah and it was the same so there was all the other voices were estimated quite well and and there was this thing with the alto but it was the same quartet because the tv poem song was only recorded with one quartet oh, I see. so we can't compare to the other alto let's say yeah we can listen to a short um maybe two second yeah yeah it's a short. Five, until second five yeah it's singing an octave, right? Maybe listen to this synth output. <laughs> 